You should get out of the box. I'll never get out of the box. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, hi. Uh, you caught me playing with my G.I. Joe toys. Hey, speaking of new G.I. Joe, let's have an interview with the guy writing the new G.I. Joe book. Folks, if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm a pretty big fan of G.I. Joe. And so I'm kind of excited because today I'm going to get to talk to a writer who is working on G.I. Joe, but has also been writing a comic that uh, you've heard me talk about on my Monday live streams on the channel Pros and Cons. You know that I've really enjoyed Dark Ride. So I'm pretty excited to talk to a writer uh, that I like. Folks, please welcome Mr. Joshua Williamson. How's it going, Josh? It's good, good, good to see you. I, I have a, I feel guilty now because I actually have a Cobra hoodie uh, that I wear sometimes, and I should have, I should be wearing that right now. Once I so disrespectful. You, I know. Uh, <laughs> what what toys that you have in the background right there? What classified is that? I've got all of them. First of all, this ju know, this just happened to be close. Do do you, um, do you know that I also have all of them? Do you? Are you a completist on this line? Oh, dude, I am. Oh, listen. Okay, we're going to talk about this. Are you Yeah, also we'll talk about this. Let's Tell you what. Are you going to get repaints? Are you getting repaints? Yeah, I am. Me too. Don't feel guilty. All right, don't feel guilty. I got them too. I get them too. This is just, if people are curious, this is just Grunt. It's it's yeah, one of yeah. the somewhat more recent ones. Actually, I dude, think I got, about I got 20 passes. Grunt. I got two Grunts so okay. that I could, you know, uh, have one with the helmet and stuff and yeah, I'm so, glad um, to hear that you're that much of a fan of G.I. Joe as a fan of G.I. Joe. That that that's nice to hear. Oh yeah, I have a dude, I have them all. I also get all the has labs. Dude, I cannot wait for my his tank. Supposed to be here in a few weeks. Yep. They keep telling us, so I'm pumped. I don't even watch the unboxing videos because I want to unbox it myself. That's so oh. funny. I've done the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to sort of level set so that um, yeah, sure. any of my audience that doesn't necessarily know you yet, like we can yeah. get get up to speed. And what I'd love to start with is this. Um, I, I did some preparation and I read some interviews with you. Oh, and yeah. I found out that, you know, a lot of us, I think, discover comics on our own. But I was reading an interview where you said your parents were both into comics and that like comics were sort of all around you growing up. Yeah. Do you have any clear memory of what the first comics you were reading were, or were they always around? Uh, it's right here. Right, right behind me. We did not plan this. No, this is so, dude, uh, this is the very first comic. Oh, the Jules Pfeiffer book. I've, I've heard of that, but I haven't read that. I actually have the dust jacket. Mark Wade has one of these that doesn't have the dust jacket on it. Uh, we've talked wow. About it. Yeah, so this comic is, this, this book is fascinating because it has... It's weird. It's, it has stories from Marvel and DC, but it's really like the history of comics. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it has, it has stories from Marvel and DC, and it also has, it's all Golden Age stuff too, right? And it came out uh, before the Silver Age started, you know, so it's like Jay, it's Jay Garrick instead of Barry, stuff like that. But it also has uh, the spirit in here, you know, it has the spirit, okay. um, you know, it has some amazing, you know, so this is really like my introduction to comics was through this. Uh, and then after that, you know, my parents both read different comics. It's funny, like, my dad was a reader of the Fantastic Four and um, Doom Patrol, but he would also read a lot of stuff like um, Bob Hope comics, you know. Um, okay, yeah. Of course, yeah, he had a long he read, run at DC. Long yeah, run. So he would read. Uh, it's funny when you think about all these, like, you know, so my my background in comics, I since I feel like I was born to do this in, in a weird way. Right. Uh, but, you know, like, yeah, my dad uh, would read Bob Hope, um, a lot of, um, like, weird, like, comedy celebrity comics. Okay. You know? Um, Did he get the Jerry Lewis ones, too, and Jerry stuff Jerry like Lewis, that? yes. That's what I was yeah. doing. Jerry Lewis, we did Jerry Lewis ones. Um, my earliest inductions was to what what eventually became What The, you know? Yes. To have that back in the day before it was What The, like. Not Brand I, X. Yes, exactly. Yeah, dude. So uh, there's some really that stuff is wacky. It, okay, it, it's like I think I'm, I'm not even word inappropriate. I'm gonna use that word, but there's stuff in there that you're like, those are some jokes, like some dirty jokes in there. But uh, my mom. Yeah, I my think mom, if if you look at the history, though, I mean, 
they were competing with some really funny guys at the time at like mad and, and, and similar books like that. And, and DC and Marvel took several stabs at, at humor magazines and stuff. In mm -hmm. fact, there's a small connection here. Of course, Larry Hama has been writing a super yeah. long running GI Joe that's continuing at skybound, but he's also been, a, a, was a long time editor at Marvel and he oversaw mm -hmm. Marvel's uh, comedy magazine for, for, um, for a while it was kind of short-lived but yeah anyway. we're gonna talk we'll, we'll talk about larry stuff too but yeah so i you know uh my mom's side you know she always tells this story about how she bought teen titans number one and she's a military brat so to her dad's rule every time they moved was she had to get rid of half the comics that she had so whatever she had she read of half of it uh so yeah i've never i always use this as a quote but like yeah i've never lived in a house that didn't have a, a long box or a short box in it like i've never had a moment where there weren't comics um, and then really early on was like Jack Kirby, uh, superpowers. Mm -hmm. Yep. That, you know, it's part of why my obsession with like Calabac, like I, I've actually only, I've never, I've written Calabac one time, uh, but I find him to be a fascinating character. But that's like childhood obsession stuff because that covered issue two. Yeah. Like, back in the toy, like that stuff, you know, uh, that was really my, my introduction into DC is through the Jack Kirby superpowers stuff. And so, yeah. yeah. It, but yeah, my parents, they they read uh, comics. You know, my dad was a big, um, not just the comics, but my dad has this massive collection of old pulp novels. Like his favorite was Doc Savage. That's why even as a kid, I recognized that Bane is just Doc Savage. He's evil Doc Savage. I, it yeah. totally is, yeah. But yeah, it's a great it, character. It works. Well, even his, even his like, crew, they're all like modeled after Doc oh, Savage. Oh, yeah. So, Bird he, and, uh, and all. Yeah, zombie. I forget all of them. Yeah, zombie. Bob, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I miss them. The, DC should uh, use them again. That was cool um, when he had like his sort of loyal henchmen. I think I think Tom used them in uh, City of Bane. I think he did. Um, I mean, I read it. No, I'll be honest. I'm just not remembering. But that's possible. That's, okay. that's entirely yeah, I possible. He, I think he used yeah her particularly, but you know, uh, yeah. Like so, I've just, I've just always been around comic books, and even when I was a little kid, like in elementary school, I was like, I want to make comic books like that yeah. stuff you know, i want to do and of course uh you also uh even going through school going through college and stuff you 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 started working at a comic book store before you were even like legally old enough to to have a a job correct yeah i was 14 yeah 14 so and you were starting to work at a comic store under the table yep that's exactly right yeah you could do your research yeah so yeah there was they were, they were giving me cash on the table and then also in exchange for some comics and so yeah as a kid i was just and I got that job because I was the annoying kid at the comic book store. Like I was there every yeah. time, like, bugging them, looking at stuff. I actually, the very first thing I ever did, I was probably even younger than that. I think the what very town, by the way, it, it, you don't have to be too oh. specific, but I'm curious, like what town were you growing oh, up? I grew in? up in the Inland Empire in California. You know? Okay, so, I'm trying to like, think of like what towns have like a really healthy um, sort of uh, uh, amount of comic book stores and culture. You know, and stuff. It's funny That's because. Interesting. The comic book store I worked at in high school was actually the same comic book store that Eric Stevenson uh, used to shop at. Sure, and so wow. he would come in, and I actually have, he and I have talked about this. I remember one time uh, hassling him when I was a kid because and I didn't know who he was. I didn't know that he was working on like Newman at the time. I didn't realize he was doing stuff with Rob. Is that with Todd Knock? Is that? It was Todd Knock, yeah. It was yeah. Jeff Matsuda, it was Jeff Matsuda and uh, Todd Knock. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember he, that. Uh, yeah, so he would come in, and I remember one time hassling him about X Men stuff. I think he was reading X Men books, <laughs> and I was like, "Multiple man has the legacy virus. All the clues are here. It's all here." Okay, yeah, you know, so that kind of dates things a little bit. <laughs> yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mid nineties stuff. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah, so y y I, I think I'm a little older, but I, I think we you got into comics a little younger than i did so i think we mm -hmm. came up with a lot of the same stuff where you know the hype for batman got a lot of kids yeah. into comics and then like uh you know the, those movies and, and animated series uh followed by all the 90s stuff with image definitely uh blew up the industry for a while so so yeah. that makes sense i i well, I, I, I think i understand where you're coming from yeah a that bit. Bit from you know the 80s obviously there was a lot of stuff going on kids were being marketed Great stuff yeah, a lot of amazing books, amazing properties, obviously, with J.I. Joe uh, at the start of the 80s. But for me, it's like, yeah, that, that moment of like 89 to 90, I'm going to say 94. But that, yeah. that window, it's like, 
so many people came into comics in that window and it was just an amazing exciting time i get defensive when people talk trash about the 90s because of it i'm like yo hit you know, the, yeah there was hit crap but there was also good stuff i yeah. I, I say yeah. that about every era of comics mm -hmm. i go i go you, you know sometimes you just need to look a little harder than other times but i swear there's always good stuff and, there, and there's always yeah. bad stuff um yeah. the 90s just had a lot more comics like, yeah. like ev there were new publishers all over the place. Marvel and DC were like trying to take shelf space. I mean, you know that you were working at a comic store. Yeah. You saw oh, everybody yeah. fighting over shelf space. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of books. And, you know, I remember the store. So I worked at a store in high school and college and a little bit outside of college. And it was fascinating to watch that progression of like, yeah. here, here's the amount of shelves we've used. I oh, now we have to use two. Oh, right. now it has to be this. And like, oh, and then, and then here's the thing is I worked at a store when Tokyo Pop became a thing, when that blew up, and it was like, oh, we have a whole section now. And then mm -hmm. I remember it was like, you know, getting a collection was a rare occurrence. Like, like you know what I mean? Like a, a oh yeah. yeah, it wasn't like it is now where everything is collected. It's part of the system. You know, I, I remember a time where that was not it. You know, where it was like, oh, I have a collection of Executioner song. Like, yay! But not sure. every issue of X Men was being collected. It was like, oh, here's this, and like. You know, uh, here's Extinction Agenda. Here you go. And you're I, like, I yeah. remember those so clearly, even though they're, they're at this point quite a long time ago. I remember them very well. Cause, and I remember, uh, uh, did you get one of those collections? Cause I heard that yes, your subscriptions fun. came rolled up and ruined. Oh my God. Yeah, dude. Yes. I was talking about this with somebody else. Um, who was it? There was somebody else, another creator, and we were, we were talking about this and we were talking about the subscription stuff. We both were subscription kids. And I had subscriptions. The, the official, just to be clear, the official like Marvel subscriptions. Yes, right? like ones in the yeah. back of the books. And yeah. and by the way, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I will. I, I'd love to point this out because it's relevant. At one point, the GI Joe subscription was by far the biggest seller that Marvel had, even above stuff like yeah. Spider Man and X Men. It was it was a huge subscription, but. The quality of the delivery on those subscriptions was not very good. No, they would literally roll it up. It was, yeah. in, the, it was in the flimmiest. It, so Robert and I were talking about this too, actually, because Robert would get subscriptions too. And yes. they would do it in these like the thinnest, the thinnest little plastic thing. And they would roll up and they shove it in there. And so for me, it was always a bummer. Can I get them, you know? Um, and they sometimes they'd be shredded. Like I get a copy <laughs> of Batman or a copy of Spider-Man 29.9 and they're just like totally erect. Um, and I remember when there was no comic book store nearby me. And so mm -hmm. once there was a comic book store nearby me, I started going in there. Did I lose you? No. Um, okay. Uh, sorry. That was a glitch. Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. So when I, uh, I was like, my internet's bad. So who knows? So when um, I started going to the comic book store, I remember my mom, I started buying stuff off the rack because the subscriptions are always a month later than buying them in the direct market. Yes. Yes. Dude, so yeah, started, they, they weren't mailing those out first. They they were mailing no. them out last. Yeah, it sucked. And uh, the other thing I used to get a lot, and you probably so different. too, was Costco, where Costco would do those giant bricks of books. They would oh, they would sure wrap, they would shrink wrap like whatever that month's worth of books. And because it was the '90s, there was a lot of comics. I never got you, one of those, but yeah, I've heard. Oh, of those. dude, they were awesome. And they were in the '80s for some reason. Like uh, there was one Christmas, like um, late '80s. And I don't know where it came from, but my parents got me a stack of um, pre-bagged 100 comics. And it was from Marvel, DC, and even a bunch of indie publishers, too. I don't know where that came from or who put all that together. But I, I read every single one, even like Mad Balls and stuff, just to see what these books were about. Oh, it was it was a fun time because you'd go to like Toys R Us and Toys R Us would have these like, here's three issues of something yeah. put together in like a cardboard thing. And you're like, yes, I will stuff. look at that. Yeah, yeah. I was I was. I, I read a lot of books in the night. <laughs> I could easily keep going down a yeah, I know. tangent talking to you about, because because you got to work through an interesting period uh, of time in the industry. But but I'd love to focus on your career be, uh, because, you know, you're, you're a busy guy. Um, and before I even get to sort of the G.I. Joe stuff that's about to come out, um, I'd love to talk a little about Dark Ride. Yeah, sure. If you've got a second, because no, sure, this yeah. is also through Skybound. Yeah. And um, this is a book that I just took a chance on because I, I generally kind of like horror. I um, I really yeah. like this book, Joshua. Oh. I really like this book. So let, let, first of all, like, I guess, what was the first stuff you did with um, Skybound? Was it Birthright or did you do something else with them before? I just remember before that, I did a book called Ghosted. Um, I remember it, Ghosted. I was proofreading yeah. for 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 um, Skybound. Um, that That's right. They did send me Ghosted. I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't know that. Mind. 
I didn't know yeah. you were proofreading for them. Well, I didn't like get a credit, but yeah, like I was, they, they'd send me all the books to, to proofread. Yeah, they did that to me um, too. Like, I, get, I get the books and like the one that I right now look forward to, I mean, I, obviously the Energon Universe stuff, but it's like, I was like, I was cool that I would get like Walking Dead and Invincible ahead of time, but like now I yeah. get Firepower ahead of time. And that's when yeah. I'm like, I'll drop whatever I'm doing and go read Firepower. But I'll just be like, oh, Firepower is in? Okay, cool. I'll go read it. But I'm always reading it a month, a month ahead. It's fun, but uh yeah, but Ghosted you also got to keep quiet about it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but Go Ghosted was the first book I did with them, and that was at a weird moment in my career where I had left. I always talk about this where I always feel like um, it was a weird moment where I had been at DC for a little bit. I right. had been doing some stuff there. I was doing some stuff at uh, I had like done like little short things for DC and Marvel, and nothing was clicking. Nothing was working. And at the time, it's because I was really being kind of like a mimic. You know, I was just kind sure. of doing what I thought should be done. I wasn't putting myself into the work at all. And then so when I started putting Ghosted together, that was a lot more of me being me, you know, than anything else I'd worked on. And so Skybound really shepherded that. And that's what led to Birthright, which led to Nailbiter. Even though Nailbiter came out before Birthright, I was working on Birthright before. But all those things built out into, became very crucial for my career. And Ghosted really was the beginning of that. Like me beginning to figure it out. Because I thought I was done, dude. Like 2012, I was like, I guess that was it. I tried. Mm. I tried. Uh, I'm glad you're doing creator own stuff. I yeah. I love the passion behind stuff like that. Um, it, it, it's obvious you grew up with, uh, especially DC characters, but a bunch of characters, and that you have a passion for them. But mm -hmm. um, I I can see the passion when I've read stuff like um, uh, forgot about Ghosted, but Ghosted and Birthright and and Dark Ride, uh, Dark Ride. Just yeah. The sort of log line is you know we're dealing with an actual cursed uh theme park just so that folks mm -hmm. know that may not be reading it that that's that's the huge huge high high level thing there, there, there's more to it but i'm curious like what would you say scares you like what kind of stuff could you have nightmares about is any of that stuff that gets into this or is this you know not necessarily the same stuff that scares you uh, but no, that, you. so this is the the origin of that book in some ways. I mean, a lot of it was because I'm obsessed with the museum parks and the history of Disney. Like, I'm, I've always been obsessed about that and, the, and the, the thoughts that go into these rides. And I think the idea of rides as being uh, essentially a story, like it's telling you a story in a different format. You know, I okay. think the moment you walk into a good theme park, they're trying to tell you a story. But so, yes, that book is full of things that I'm afraid of. And one of them was... You know, I had worked on some horror books. I had a lot of friends that worked on some horror comics. And I had this moment where I was like, with everything going on in the world, what even is scary anymore? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is scary? And I wanted to tell a story about that of, like, what does scare people? And how do you scare people? Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, how do you scare people now when people have kind of seen everything? Right? And there's stuff in the real world that is scarier. So you're trying to find a way to, like, not only do uh, scary stuff that scare them, but also escapism. Right? And so I started putting it on the book, and that's why even in the first issue, the character Sam says that. Like this, they, 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 I was True. on the nose with some of the characters about what I was feeling, where it's like they're literally being, they're saying those words of like, what even is scary now? How do you scare people? But for me as a creator, you know, coming up with new ideas and coming up with new books. And so the journey that Sam has, especially in the first issue, where he's talking about building a ride. To me, the rides replace coming up with new ideas and books and doing creator own books and doing horror books. It was really what I was thinking about at that time of how do I make a horror comic right now? Right? Like, how do I make yeah. a horror comic right now that not only is scared of people, but scares me? And okay. so I had those characters sort of going on that journey. And so there's a lot of stuff in that book that are things I'm afraid of. You know, I'm, as we just, we've talked about, I work on a lot of projects. I'm very clearly a workaholic. And there is some stuff about being a workaholic that can be scary about the pieces of life that you you miss because of it. And and stuff with my kids. So it's like I put a lot of that emotion of me being a workaholic, what I'm thinking about, about what scares me in, into that book. I oh okay. I did not know that you're a father. So so Oh yeah, two kids. Yeah. That that that's very interesting, Joshua, because when I read Dark Ride. There are some primal type uh, scares, like, you know, you mm -hmm. get onto a ride, you go into like, you know, a dark hole, essentially. Yeah. And instead of it being fun, there's something there that basically eats you. 
and, and that's a very simple sort of like primal fear that we have about like going into the dark and stuff. And I like the monster stuff and I like the gory stuff. But the thing that's that that works for me very well is that underneath all of that, or maybe on top of it, however we want to define it, there's this. The guy that created it is uh, is is this father that we the audience know is the worst, like really yeah. really evil bad murderer guy that's made some sort of a pact and the way he treats his children is is awful you know like the his i i'm hoping that both the son and the daughter uh you know find a way to sort of escape his his grasp and 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 his you know they they, they feel obligated to work for him and get his approval and stuff like that um, but he's 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 abusive, uh, emotionally abusive, and it's very relatable. Is all I can say. Not that I went through that, but it just feels very grounded and real, even though there's supernatural stuff going on. And and I like that. I really do. That's awesome. I'm glad you pick up on all that. I mean, I, I, that is what the book is. You know, when we were doing Birthright, it was about this like happy family and this happy family going through a hard time and how sometimes life will throw you curveballs as a family and you have to. You know, uh, I have this this thing I think about sometimes about memory and, and grief. And I think about how you have your memories of the past, your memories of the present, but you sort of build memories of the future. And sometimes those futures don't work out the way you want them to, and you kind of need to grieve that a little bit. And that's a lot of what Birthright was about, was about that process. And, and sort of recognizing that life isn't always gonna work out the way you think it does, but that's not a bad thing all the time, right? And it's about yeah. you as a family, moving forward with that. When we started doing this book, I was like, I'm gonna completely turn that around and make it, <laughs> make the dad an awful person. It's the right? worst. Like, make it this awful person. I mean, you, you see this in issue seven, um, the issue where they have dinner together. Right. And, you know, we talk about fear, but I'm like, for some people, sitting down and having dinner with your family can be terrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and having dinner with somebody like Arthur, who is this abusive father, in that moment, he you'll notice about that book, he never hits them. No, never, you know, that's never, why I made a point to say emotionally abusive. Like yeah. he's not, he's not physically beating his kids and stuff, but they just are, are craving his attention. They're, they're, they're yeah. fighting between each other and squabbling. And yet you see that like this brother and sister have been like pushed apart by this father and mm -hmm. they still kind of like each other. They want to like connect, yeah, but they, like... they can't because they've been raised in this horrible environment. Yeah. He triangulates them. Oh, it's know, awful. Like the fact that he's able to use them against each other to get what he wants or what he needs. And, and, but he puts it all through this lens of like, but I do this because I love you. Right. And, I want and, you to, to, to take over and be successful. And yeah, but does he really want that? You know, no, it's, it's, all it's all about him. It's all about his, his legacy and ideas and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's he's what, like their back. He's, they're like his backup plan almost to just keep things going. Yeah. I, I don't know. We'll see. Like, there's stuff. I'm not sure if you read issue nine yet. That just came out yesterday. So nine. No, not yet. A little bit. Okay, you get. There's some more stuff coming. You start okay. to see a bit more about what he's been doing and and uh, and how much he's uh, a piece of shit. <laughs> Great artist though for it too. Um, let me. Oh just, yeah. Because uh, okay. I, I I feel like sometimes I don't uh, spend enough time saying something like that. But Andre Bresson um, really yeah. really feels like uh, I don't know. He good at showing some sincere emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, on the character, mm -hmm. which which helps uh, ground it, uh, and good at monsters and stuff like that. Some really yeah. gory, bloody stuff. So I love that it can be like that. Let's go ahead and get into the Inner John universe a little bit. Yeah, you want to talk about GI Joe? I do, I do. <laughs> I, I I I love it. I <laughs> me too. I'm yeah. trying. I I don't want to get too nerdy, but like, so it was only um, a month ago, not even. Yeah. yeah. And we got to, to to meet each other briefly at like you know uh, New York Comic Con, and and thank you for giving me some of your time. But I, I'm putting this up there so that if folks can see, it's not the best picture because it wasn't what I was focusing on. But but Joshua does have a line here, and there are people with a lot of oh, yeah his Com books, including the uh, the Duke Ash Can yeah that that, yeah. that um, Skybound gave out to those of us who attended the panel, and and that's going for. A lot of money, surprisingly, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's nice. Um, so, so cash in on those now, Joshua. Um, oh, I know. Well, I also want to point out in that shirt. I'm not sure if you noticed in that shirt. I was wearing a Haunted Mansion shirt in that in that picture. 
it's a what wallpaper. it's the that's the wallpaper from inside the haunted mansion that shirt that i'm wearing right there oh my god i didn't know that it's, it's but i see it like, uh, I'm, used to I'm actually wearing a, a haunted mansion cardigan right now while we're talking but uh, <laughs> i really love all this stuff how yeah. was how, how was uh how was new york comic-con in terms of like um what kind of response did you see from uh you know talking about gi joe and and, and revealing a few little things there what was what was what was the vibe you know dude it was awesome yeah i mean I, I think that's one thing you know we've had this secret um for so long like we've been living with it for so long and to when it when you know i think that robert was right in his planning of like we're gonna come in hard and fast and it's gonna be a surprise um that energy from that, right? And yeah. so for us, we're like, we're so excited because all of us are fans, right? Like, I mean, you know, Robert is a huge fan of Transformers and J.I. Joe, know. you know, and me and Sean Maquis and all the artists, obviously Daniel, you know? So it's like, all of us are super pumped <laughs> about working on this all the time. I mean, that's really how it, it it's fun because it's like, there was a moment where we were just having fun before we had to get to work. You know, yeah. like, a moment where it was just like you and your buddies talking about, okay, what do we love about these things? Which characters do we love? And just having fun and be like, what if this happened? Oh, what if this happened? Oh man, what if this, you know? Even when we were at New York Comic Con, we all had dinner together and we were all talking about all of this. And there were moments where like, somebody would be like, oh, what if this character says this like three years from now? And all of us were like, yes. Uh, and then we had to get to work. <laughs> so, then, so then you're, yeah, then you're, you know, for the last few years, we were writing and drawing and working on these projects and, and really building out these big plans. So when we finally got to like San Diego Comic Con and New York Comic Con, uh, it was just awesome to have people come up and be excited about what we were doing. You Good. know, we're so excited about it. So I mean, it was funny. It was bittersweet uh, sometimes because I love GI Joe so much, and I would have people come to me and they'd be like, they would they they know me from other stuff, and so they're just like. I never thought I'd be buying a GI Joe comic book, and so part of me is like, good. "Yay!" And then part of me is like, "What do you mean you never thought you'd buy a comic book?" You know, so uh, it, but it was it was fun, dude. It was really that panel, and then the aftermath of that panel, um, having the ash cans, and it, dude. But here's the thing, and I, you know, it's because you were there. Yeah, we're very secretive. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I have yeah. not been allowed to talk about anything for years, and so that was the first <laughs> time I could be like, "Look, we have art. Look, right." look at this stuff. Like that was the first time we were showing stuff. And so that was really fun to do. And even then I still wasn't able to talk about as much as I wanted to. Uh, I could I'm tell. Dying sometimes. I'm dying to like talk about all of it, but yeah. It but was... it's, co it's coming. It's coming. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I think, you know, um, there are, there could be an argument that in some ways you have the toughest part of what, what's being built here uh, in this regard. So we're talking about something called, the Energon universe, first of all, which is a new continuity where G.I. Joe and Transformers and some stuff that Robert's writing, uh, some sci-fi space stuff, all takes place in a shared universe. OK, so that this is Skybound is continuing Larry Hama's run, but also they're starting a new continuity. Transformers, you know, has huge movies. Um, and, and it's got Daniel Warren Johnson and Robert Kirkman. Everybody knows Robert Kirkman from Walking Dead and Invincible. So they're always going to check something like that out. G.I. Joe, I love. But G.I. Joe has, um, uh, you know, a somewhat segmented fan base because, you know, they had their vintage era of the 80s into the early 90s. And now they're doing classified. It, it, it's not quite at the same level that Transformers is. So. How do you look at that and go, I'm going to make G.I. Joe relevant because I love G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The G.I. Joe vintage era was so rooted in 80s Americana. Yeah. You know, how do you make that relevant for today? Like, what, what? You know, well, first I want to say, like, you know, that was actually really surprising to me because I love G.I. Joe so much. I had no idea that it wasn't at the same level, actually. That was actually something I learned this year. You know, okay. I, I didn't, I, you know, and because it, it's funny, like, obviously, you know, I, I, we were talking before I get all the classified toys. I've been reading the comics forever, which we, we can talk about that too. And, <laughs> you know, I, I watched the cartoon, like it is a part of me. Like it's yeah. a part of like my childhood. It's something I, you know, the, even the reason why I, I got this job, was because of me just talking about loving G.I. Joe, you know? And That's so, great to hear. So to me, I didn't, 
I didn't know. I, I had sworn off license books. I was like, I'll do Marvel and DC. I'll never do another license book again, like other property. Um, at one point, I was talking to Skybound about it. And I was like, well, there is one. There's one that I would do. Mm-hmm. Because I had been thinking about it. And I obsessed about it. And I had notebooks full of ideas for it. So I was like, there's one. Interesting. So one when they were like, dude, it's so... I'm, I'm going to rewind before we get into the relevant stuff. Because I okay. do want to talk about that. But, you know, years ago. I mean, like, so my son, uh, he's almost four. He's running around. We were talking about this before he was born. And we would sit there and we would, I remember talking to to Skybound, talking to Sean Makowitz of, like, you know, what is a property you would love to do? And I was like, oh, G.I. Joe, that's that's the only one that's left. You know, I have a lot of thoughts on it. I have a lot of thoughts on the characters, a lot of stuff about how I would do it differently. The questions that I had, things that I felt as a fan, I kind of wanted to, like, see. Okay. You know? And so I was like, I, I had probably thoughts together. And I remember talking to Sean about it. And this is before they had, I think they talked about it. And, you know, Robert was something Robert had always wanted to do. Um, and I remember it was funny. He was like, oh, Robert has this idea that he eventually wants to do a thing where he releases a creator own book. He doesn't tell anybody. And the last page has a transformer on it. And I was like, that is an awesome idea. From it's that moment, strong. dude, every time Robert did another book, I was like, is firepower number one? Gonna <laughs> like every time he did another book, I was like, because I wasn't in the, the in it, it with them as much, but I really just love the property. So to me, because I, I have this love of the property, I wasn't aware of the fact of what you're saying, where it doesn't have that same level. It's rough to talk about this, that level of popularity, but it's like, yo, there are so many, there are so many uh, Transformers movies and yeah. Transformers has rebooted itself so many times. Right. Like, have they But it's really- sci-fi, whereas G.I. Joe is still sort of military and it and it's American military. It's American you know, military. But you know, the thing about it is, I mean, you still have to honor that. You still have to make it about American military. But the thing that I love most about G.I. Joe, you know, the the I grew up in a military family, that's also important, like both sides okay. of the family. You know, like my my grandpa was in World War II. He was there on D-Day. Like, so I, I've grown up, my, my dad was in the military. Like there's a lot of military people in my family. So that's definitely an important aspect of it. But the part that I loved most as a kid were the characters. Yeah. And so to me, you start with the characters, right? You look at each character and you say, how do I make this character to their core, the same character I loved then, mm-hmm. but put it in today's setting. And that's why we started off okay. at the beginning. That's why we started with Just Duke and we're starting... I hate to say we're starting small because I don't think that's fair because it's still a big story we're doing, but it's why we're starting at like day one. It's why we're starting with Duke. Starting with one character instead of like introducing a team of 13 to 20 to uh, 500. And here's the thing, like they're continuing Larry Hama's story. Right. Oh, and I think that's a, that's a very important part of this where it's like, if you are a fan of that story Larry Hama has been doing for the last 40 years, it's still here. I'm incredibly jealous of it all the time because he has all those characters yeah. that I'm like, I want to, I want to play with them too, but we're starting with one. And then we, we start with that and we start with it today. Right. And we start with it today with this character. And that's how we try to tell a bit of a, I guess you would say a modern relevant story, yeah. right? it, but it's like, I, I just look at the characters and what would the characters be doing right now today? And that's where I, I start there and I try to make it fun. You know, that, that's interesting. How yeah. was the decision made to do basically two books initially as compared to just a G.I. Joe title? What went into deciding you were going to do both um, a Duke book initially and a Cobra Commander book, like sort of simultaneously? Like what, yeah, what, so, what went into that decision? Uh, well, first of all, it was like we could have started with G.I. Joe, but I think that would have been the expected thing to do. And a big sure. part was about not doing the expected thing, right? Like we want to try to do some twists and turns. I mean, you see this with what Daniel's doing over in Transformers. So, you know, the fact that he has Bumblebee die in the first issue, spoilers, yeah. you know, but it's like, we want to show we're doing something different. And so starting with Duke that says, again, we're starting the beginning. Well, being super honest, we were having this call. We we're having this call like a, a, over a year ago, oh, deep over a year ago. And it was only going to be the Duke book. And we started talking about Cobra Commander's role in the Duke book and Cobra Commander's role in the Energon universe and where he was and what he was doing. And as we started talking, 
you know, I, I'm going to talk about my influence in this just to be super honest with you. There was a moment in the call where I started talking about Cobra Commander because Cobra Commander is one of my favorite villains of all time. He's interesting. Yeah, he's an interesting character. And so, which again, there was I had a lot of notes about Cobra Commander before I got the job. I had all these thoughts about him and his role in G.I. Joe and his role in Cobra in general. And so as we started talking about it one day, I was like, you know, Hickman did this thing with the X-Men. You know, he did Hawks Pox, where it was these two different books, but they were parallel with each other. And I was like, I found that to be really interesting. And I was mm -hmm. like, we're in this call, and I, it was funny because it was like me, Sean Mackowitz, Robert, and Daniel. And my schedule was already insane. It has been insane for years. But I was like, oh, we're doing this Duke book. And I was like, you know, it would really make sense if we did a Cobra Commander book because everything we were talking about. And I remember Sean was like, would you write that though? And I'm like, I would write it under these specifications where I'm like, it's, it is, they're, they're two books you could read independently, but if you mm -hmm. read them together, you will see that it is one story that we are building. And it is about these two characters that are on a collision course with each other. They're on different, they're, yeah, like it, it's interesting. Like we were talking about how it's like, they both have this moment where they think they know what they want and they know who they are. And they go on kind of this uh, this crisis of faith, right? Because their world changes around them. Yeah. And how they both react to it differently, and they have a different they have a different experience and a different reaction at the end of that story of these two five issue minis that take them to where you know we're gonna go with them, which is obviously this bigger bigger story we're doing with Demijohn Universe and Void Void Rivals and with Transformers. But that's how it started. It was really just like uh, organically as we were talking, and it's like. It. it was funny because they were like, can you write it? They were like, can you write both? Like, do you have a room in your schedule? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, how am I going to turn it down? And that Cobra Commander book, is, dude, it is so much fun. It is so much That's fun. That's cool. Uh, you know, Cobra Commander in the cartoon and Cobra Commander in Larry Hama's comic are, are fairly different characters. Um, yes. Are you taking inspiration from... Uh, you know, either or both, are you doing something that you feel is different? Like what, what, what tonally, like what, what, what are you, what are you going for with Cobra Commander specifically? And then we'll loop back to Duke. Yeah. Um, my answer to you at one point when you started asking about the, the differences, I was going to say yes to you, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I'm trying to take pieces from everything and I really look at it through this lens of, of more of a horror story with him. Uh, you know, in, in the he's a terrorist, so so okay, I'm yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, and but he's also this master manipulator, right? You know? And so I wanted to show because this is the, so back in the way back when when I was making my notebooks and stuff, I would I would often think about how is it exactly the Cobra Commander was able to build this, not only build it but maintain this. You have all these different factions of people who have different goals for motivations. They all have different things they want. They're all looking out for themselves, sure. right? Like that is something all Cobra. And I was like, oh, it's so interesting. And, and oh, part of it was, I would I would read the comic or I would watch the cartoon. And I would be like, it's so fascinating how it's, it's one side versus another. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you watch the cartoon and you watch the first mini and then you watch the second mini and then you start getting into the show and you're like, oh, it's always these two groups against each other. I wanted to show how it was different factions. And so I was like, well, what if we did that? What if we started there where it's like, Cobra initially is built up of different factions of people, yeah. right? Like it's different, different factions of uh, characters running their own little groups. Right. And then you have somebody who comes in and somehow is able to bring them all together. Um, sure, because Destro and Zartan are very, very different individuals, yep. for instance. Destro is, a, is an arms dealer. Zartan is more of a you know, a biker mercenary. And, yeah, and yeah, who's like, always out for himself. I mean, he's big time out for himself a lot. Yeah. But then you have the twins and you have Baroness and you start getting these different groups. True. They've got very like, different motivations. So it was like, how is it that Cobra Commander has been able to maintain this? Not just build it, but maintain it. Mm. And it's because he's so manipulative. And so I was like, all right, I want to do a story through that lens of him yeah. being this master manipulator and show how we get there and how he's able to pull these forces together and what it is, particularly him and Destro, right? Because, sure. I'm like, you know, Destro always, I mean, even when you go back and you watch those early episodes, um, that first mini, and it's like when Destro shows up at that like Cobra temple, that there is such hate between them. Yeah. 
you know, yeah, but they like, keep working together, right? They keep working together. Why? And, so and in the comic, you know, Destro typically has a, a lot more honor and stuff, but yeah, he keeps sort of coming back and working with uh Cobra commander. So yeah, yeah you're, so you're right. It, it is, a, it is a conundrum. Okay. Well, I would like to see yeah. how you potentially uh, make sense of that. That, that, that that's oh, a good angle. I am. I am dying to know what you think about some of this stuff. And because I don't really, I, 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 am, I enjoy talking to different people who are fans of the property because everyone has their own takes, their own opinions. Like, so do I, obviously, you know, um, I think, so I'll, I'll tell you this with, with Cobra Commander. When I wrote the outline, and there's still to this day, there are times where I'm like, there's no way Hasbro is going to let me get away with this. Hmm. I had a moment, even um, last week, I was looking at some art from Cobra Commander, and I was like, this is really weird. This is easily the bloodiest book I'm working on right now, is this Cobra Commander book. Like, yeah. we're taking it to places. What's like, that approval right? process like? Like, let, let us know. Oh, it, it's been, so here's the thing. Like, it's been awesome. Like, they have a lot of faith in what Skybound is building, a lot of trust in us, and they give us a lot of leeway. And I, I'm always trying to, I'm, I'm respectful of that. I also do try to push it a little bit. I'm like, let's see what they're going to let me get away with. Let's see what they're going to get away with. And even with Cobra Commander number one, you know, I, I tell this story all the time, but it's true. It's like, I remember when I finished Cobra Commander number one, I wrote it. I talked to Robert and Sean about it. They had a couple notes and I was like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll insert those notes. And mostly they were like, let's flush out these scenes. So it was like, oh, you're going to give me more pages. Terrific. Let's do that. You know, it's like, let's flush a couple scenes out. And I remember when I was getting turned into Hasbro, I was like, there is no way they're saying okay to this issue. Hmm. Like somebody is going to come in and be like, you can't do that. What are you talking about? And I was fully ready for it. Cause I was like, it's a weird horror comic starring Cobra commander. Okay. Let's see what happens. And they came back with no notes. I'm glad they're willing no to notes. try something like that. Then that's, that's, that's what really I, interesting. Dude, it makes it really fun because once you realize they have trust in you and faith mm. in wing and they really believe in the, in this, the, the big story that Skybound is doing it, that freedom, it, it's empowering, you know, yeah. and it makes you want to try stuff, but it also that it, it is easily some of the most fun I'm having in comics right now is working on these books. And so, yeah, the approval process, you know, we definitely go back and forth on some stuff, but really it's, it's they're, you know, they're checking us on stuff because obviously they are like, how do I put this? Like they're the shepherds for this property, right? Like it's, it's theirs, but it's like, you know, I, I don't consider myself, it's funny, I think about this a lot when it comes to any of these properties, like either uh, Marvel, DC, anything. It's like, I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert. I love it. And you can love something and not know everything about it. Right? Yes. But it's always good. And so that's one thing with this, um, you know, Skybound actually hired somebody who is a very much like me expert on everything. And it's- Are you talking about Diana Davis? No, no, no. It's somebody else. Um, oh, okay. Because she's like a huge G.I. Joe expert that works with Larry on his comic. I didn't know if you were talking no, about No, I know that. She's, I know she's that. smart. No, it's somebody who, uh, it's mostly on the Energon Universe stuff. And Energon Universe stuff. Got it. Yeah, they'll they'll uh, they'll message every once in a while and they'll, they'll bust me on something. They're like, okay. oh, actually. And I'm like, I appreciate that. I want to know that. You know, okay. I want you to, because I want it to be accurate. And sure. obviously we're taking things in different directions. We're doing different stuff, but it's like, Again, I always try to be respectful. Um, but yeah, dude, it's been it's been uh, it's really fun working on those on the properties. And then yeah, we built these. Let's uh, talk about this. Yeah, let's go for let's it. talk about this. Yeah. Um, makes sense to start with sort of a smaller team. You've got a lot of characters you can pull from. There 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 had to be a lot that went into the decision making process of sure. who the team would be. A, this is just a taste. This is this just is a taste. Yeah. 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 Right, because you're doing Duke and you're doing yep. Cobra Commander. And I'm assuming yep. at some point we just get G.I. Joe. Maybe. Who knows? We'll see. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Tried to get something out of him, folks. He won't crack. <laughs> um, but I look at this and I go, okay, oh. Duke, um, makes some sense to, to start a book with him. He, you know, uh, yeah. he was certainly the lead of the cartoon. the cartoon, not as much in the comic until Later, later in the run, yeah, it was later. It yeah. was originally not, definitely uh, Hawk, and, and then you know Snake Eyes, essentially. But yeah. I'm looking at these preview images that you guys have released, and it's certainly notable that we're not like starting off with Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. I would think yeah. that they're they're inevitable, but they're certainly not here. So, um, w w 
who decided it was going to be Duke? Was that you? Was that Robert? Was that Hasbro? Who was like, we're going to start with Duke? Uh, Robert hates when I say this, but, you know, I always joke that, like, it's because Robert told us. <laughs> like, Robert was, you know, but Robert, he he initially was like, I think we start with Duke. And at first I was hesitant, you know. Um, but then when we started talking about it, it was like, okay, if we're looking at this property, we're looking at the characters that are synonymous with the property, right? And so yeah. we know who Duke is, right? And then yeah. I, I am well aware of the fact that there are many schools of thought on Duke, and some of them are he is awesome. And some of them are like, he's a bland character. I hate him. Right? Like, I understand this is in the fandom. I'm aware of it. So for me, I was like, okay, let's take a character that people think they know and break him a little bit. And it made sense for Duke, who is this kind of straight man, you know, I guess you could compare him to like, I hate that I keep using X-Men examples, but, you know, he's like the Cyclops. Right? And, and Cyclops He's became... almost Captain America too, to me. But yeah. Yeah. But you take those characters and you break them a little bit and then you can see who they really are. And so okay. with Duke, it was like, let's take him, let's break him and let's rebuild him and let's show how he becomes, you know, because it's like, why Why is he the leader? Right? Like, right. why? Why? Yeah, you I know? mean, he's he's a first sergeant in, in a team that has, you know, like uh, generals and admirals and stuff like that. But he's still the guy yeah. that like, you know, leads them on the field. It's interesting. Yeah. So I was like, let's start there. Let's start with him and let's break him, you know? So even in the first issue, we show a bit of like, this is a Duke you know, and then we twist it to take it in a new place and okay. try to show how we can break him down a little bit. Because, you know, I'm not sure how much you've already read, but it's like, you know, he has that encounter with Starscream. Yes. And because of that encounter with Starscream, because it's such a traumatic and tragic moment for him, it changes his worldview. And so it gave us this opportunity to kind of use him as a point of view on not just the G.I. Joe, like the rising of G.I. Joe and rising of Cobra, but also the Energon universe. Like what's happening because with him, it's like when he sees Starscream, he doesn't automatically think, oh, that's an alien. You know, he's like, that's a robot. That's a weapon. And I have to get answers. I have to know what that okay. is, you know. And so we're able to use him and take him on an emotional journey and show why he is who he is. That's why we that was why we chose Duke uh, initially. To okay. Be to be the main yeah. point of view, and then obviously at that point we just start adding more and more characters to it, you know? And that's what we look at, like where Tom yeah. Riley has just shown him, like Duke is is pretty broken following an encounter yeah. with an alien giant robot, which, can, yeah, of course, like who who, who wouldn't um, be affected by something like that when he, he's been around the world for, you know, fighting in all sorts of zones and, and knows all sorts of cultures, and, and this is just completely new and foreign to him. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But what about like just just like how do you choose Stalker? How do you choose Baroness? Like what, what goes into that? Is that right. you? This is so yes. So here's the thing. I, I made some rules for myself that I immediately broke. <laughs> and one of the rules was I was looking at the rollout of the characters and I was looking at the rollout of the toys. Okay. So first I was like, okay, who are in those initial groups of toys? Right. So I'm like, yeah. okay, who's in who's in the 83, who's in the 84, right? Like I was basically breaking it down. Um Oh, okay. You're going like sort of vintage, a real American hero, three and a three quarter inch toys. Got yeah. It. So that's why I started. I was looking at that first. It's like who, who was in those initial groups? Because I didn't want to keep it smaller at first. Yeah. 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 Um, but then of course, like obviously you see Mercer over there. So obviously I cheated. Like, right. Over here on the yeah. Cobra side, <laughs> you took a character that's, that's really only known for like the animated movie for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was a Viper in the movie that had like joined quit and joined the gi joe team fascinating idea which never really got too explored so i was really surprised slash impressed with that idea yeah well that was it because you know i uh mercer was one of my favorite toys as a kid he was my favorite character hmm. and so for me i was like but that backstory right there that, like that's it right there it's like he was in cobra and then he defected over to gi joe yeah that is awesome but if yeah. we're starting at the beginning, if we're starting at this origin point, this like day one of this story, that means he'd be over there still. And that, that makes the character. And then there's the twist and the turns of, is he going to come over? Is he? Right. This is a new continuity. Like we see so, Baroness here and we're assuming to a degree, like because of what we know, 
yeah, she's probably a spy, but I don't know that for a fact. It's just yeah. so so you can play with my expectations. You, exactly. You know, and, and and how dare you? The, but yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is about because each one of these characters is introduced in ways. Have you read issue one? Have you read issue one? No. Oh, okay. Oh, we gotta I, get you. I don't want. I, I don't think I want to be spoiled. I think I'm, I'm, oh, I'm trying okay. to like wait and see everything in real time. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm curious to think about how some of these characters start getting introduced because they're going to be introduced in ways that you might not. You might not expect. I'm know? looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to to seeing something new because I love GI Joe, and um, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm hey, as long as I'm still getting Larry Hama's continuity, that that to yeah. me is just what I sort of grew up with, and that's what I love. You know, he he's yeah. the guy that wrote yeah. almost all of the file cards. So to me, he was building who the character personalities we, were. Yeah. So for me, um, and I've had this. I, I apologize. I've, I've I've done a lot of podcasts about this. Oh, so it's all I'm, good. I, you know, so one of the things I do is um, with with the book is every time I'm introducing a new character, yeah, the first thing I do, and I say new character, but when I'm bringing in a character, the very first thing I do is I go read the original file card. Oh, cool. Because to me, that is the origin point. That is the big bang for that yeah. character. That is who they are at their core. And, you know, I think the world that Larry built, the fact that he was able to build this universe has lasted this whole time. I mean, you know, he is the creator and, like, godfather of this property. Yeah. That's where you start. You go look at those. Like, you look at that and you go, okay, that's who that character is. Right. It tells you, you the, the the sort of, like, origin or motivation. It gives you, a, like, a, a, a an important nugget of who that character is in, yeah, in those and five parts. There's always some kind of little tip. The thing I miss the most in the classified, by the way. Dude, I was just thinking about the yesterday because I got uh, what did I get yesterday? I got the new the Alley Vipers, I think. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, it's funny because it, it's weird on the um, they released the the the, the three inch figures. And I still had the cards on them, so I'm yeah. still cutting the cards out when I open them up. And so I was cutting those cards out, and I was looking at the back of the classifieds, and oh, it was, it was Shooter. Oh, shoot. Shooter. Yeah. Right yeah. And really I'm, cool to like, get a sort of a newer character in class. Yeah. But I was like, I'm actually not that familiar with Shooter. So I was like, oh, I wish there was a file card for her on yeah. the back. That's my only. And I said, listen, Hasbro, I love you. Don't worry about it. But yes, like, <laughs> like I love those things. I wish they had those file cards on. But yeah, dude, I have a stacks of those those toys over here, dude. Like, it is. But the so file my... cards are where you're starting when you're um, introducing yep. a character. Yeah. That's, Any... that's really cool to hear. Uh, yeah, and no, I look at the file cards. I, I start there, and you know, um, it's funny, dude. So I'm not sure if you know this. In the '80s, they would do different like collectible cards for GI Joe. Mm -hmm. and one of the ones they did really early on are just the packaging art. So it's like the explosion in the back, yeah, with, with the file card on the back of it, and they had rounded edges. I didn't see those. I wonder dude, if my buddy Hooded Cobra Commander 788 has that. He's got a big YouTube channel. Dude, they are hard to find. At one point, I went on eBay, and it was like, I think, $1,000 for the set. My oh, brother. my God. Dude, they're hard to find. I have... What is the only one that I have? I have a few in here, because I use those sometimes. Just as, like, reminders sometimes. Yeah, you, that's great. You just flip through, and you just read, and it gives you some ideas, gives you some thoughts. But that's where I start off with, you know, I look, I look at all that. But yeah, dude, I have all the toys. I have like, well, in the age, in here. what's that? Yeah, uh, in the age of variant covers, if uh, <laughs> if Skybound wants to do a file card cover, um, I'm available. Yeah, I know you've got Tom <laughs> Riley and Andrea uh, <laughs> on um, Cobra Commander, and they're they're great. But uh, you know, yeah. if you need a file <laughs> card. Um, for for the book, we're doing uh, like recreations of those of that art of that's like awesome. a character with the explosion behind them. So there's no wow. for there's no for I'll tell you, for an underrated characters. artist who I wish there was more history out there about. A guy named Hector Garrido who painted mm -hmm. most of those uh, early file card. Well, not file card. The the actual explosion. Yeah. With the, the character. Dude, Great um, artwork. Just I kind. I mean, that's sort of what I'm wearing. Like these are all painted by Hector yeah. Garrido. Great artist. Great Did artist that I wish that I knew out? more about. Did you get that hardcover that came out? That really big one that was like art of, of GI Joe. It's like one hundred fifty dollars. It's like a big one, like a slipcase. No, I'm not that rich. Last year, dude, I've been I've been eyeballing it. That might be. I, I'm the kind of person that like Christmas is always weird for me because I'm always. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I want because it's like, you know, I already have too much stuff as it is. But that's one that I was like, I think I'm gonna. That that's something I'll be like. Listen, if someone wants to buy me a gift, that's the one to get me. Is that because? It has all that stuff in there, and it has a lot of interviews with the original artists and the original oh, that's like cool. toy design. You know, I'll send you a link. It's it's uh, you you can't um, you can't buy it on 
like Amazon or anything, you can only buy it directly through the the website that made it. Um, mm. I'll send you a link of it. It's real cool, dude. You're gonna be like, holy crap, I have to have this. It's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, like, that's what, dude. Sometimes the motivation. I just go back and I look through stuff. I, I just look at what the you know the art, the stories, you know, um, the even looking, you know, obviously looking at Larry Hama's stuff, right? Because it's like you know, I, I, I talk about this a lot where it's like. With the comic stuff, it was interesting because I didn't read the Larry Hama comics until I was in college when Marvel was re-releasing the omnibuses that were like with the Jason. Oh, Hockey interesting. Stuff. Yeah, he and was so, actually more my introduction to comics, but that that's oh really? Oh yeah. Not not one hundred percent, but very very early on. Mm -hmm. Mike Zeckart used to really catch my eye, and he was doing not just covers on gi joe but also he did that um craven's last mm, hunt craven's and that was yeah. really like when i i had bought some comics before that but that that all of a sudden made a huge impact getting both mm -hmm. that spider-man and a bunch of really good gi joe comics that he'd done the cover on and, and that really have, got me into it do you have a favorite do you have a favorite gi joe comic and don't say 21 <laughs> how dare you how dare you not allow me to? It, it it may be cliche, but the silent issue is fantastic. Um, do I have a favorite issue? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really interesting question that no one's asked me before, so I hadn't really uh, considered it. But there is actually one that I, I just pops into my head, and I I might change my mind about it being my favorite. Yeah, but yeah, the yeah. cover is Scarlet and uh, Snake Eyes at night walking through a minefield like a low okay. angle it's it's really tense and they basically um had gone um rogue from gi joe to to save some of their comrades that are like sort of uh, being held hostage in an in eastern european country and that was that was really good that's a good one um one of my favorite i mean obviously the first issue i think is like underrated as one of the best first issues it's really ever. strong dude it's crazy because it's like when you look at it that's that's an issue where i always feel like when you read a comic and when you're done you read it immediately again just to be like how did they do mm. that and that is one where it's like that comic has a lot going on. It introduces a whole world, a whole concept, a bunch of characters, yeah. but tells a very compelling real story, right? Because it's the whole debate of are they going to save a, a character, a person that they don't really they don't like. agree with philosophically, but but that's sort of what makes them the well, best she, is that they're willing to do their job. Yeah, she should talk to them. So it's like you know, but they're, are they willing to save this person? But their their whole thing is like, well, she has these secrets. What if you know? It's it's fascinating. And yeah. one of my uh, favorite issues is issue three, and it's the one where they they take down a robot. They take down oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a robot, and they bring it into the pit, and they're just like, and it, it, yeah, you it know breaks what? apart into all these little like things little that they have to. Yeah, around. and the whole thing is like, well, now here's the problem: the pit is a secret location. Right. If that robot makes it from the bottom to the top and alerts Cobra where they are, now Cobra they're finished. Is. So the whole thing is we have to stop it from making. It's like it's like uh, what is that? Movie? Like the raid or something, but like the raid is like opposite because it's making right. it up. They're trying to stop it. While yeah. this is happening, <laughs> there is a party happening at the top, and they're not. They no, don't know. They're like you're hearing explosions. Like what's going on down there? It is awesome. That issue. It's a good comic. Tell, right from the beginning. Yeah, I'll tell you what's for that. That issue influences a lot of like what I'm, I'm okay. doing. You know, it's a little bit of a spoiler because. I love that issue so much that I'm like, okay, there's there's stuff from that that definitely influenced uh, what I do in the book because Josh, of how great that issue is. <laughs> would you ever, would you ever dare to do a silent issue of GI Joe? Dude, I think about this all the time. I don't know, I don't know. I I, I feel like IW did it right. Like I think they did do some stuff that was reflective of that. I don't know, man. Well, here's the thing. I'd have to like, how do you do it different? How do you do it? I different? don't know. I actually was, uh, there was another project I was working on that was completely unrelated. And we were talking about this. We were like, oh, how would you, it was a completely different project, but they're like, how would you do it differently? And I was like, oh, I think it'd be interesting to do it silent. Like I had some ideas about like, how do you do it silent? Because you look at stuff that are like silent movies and how silent movies would do their storytelling. Mm -hmm. and I think I'd be interesting to put in there. So doing something silent has been in my mind. I did think about this because like that issue is great. Like it is just a great comic book. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it would depend on a couple things and how we get there. And obviously, as you know, like it's a high bar to clear that is all dude. It is. Yeah. And it, because it was such an innovative issue in that moment, yeah. um, I believe, and I still believe this, that, you know, when you're reading a comic book, you should be able to understand what happened without reading a line of dialogue. I agree. You I know? agree. Like, yeah. Do you remember when Marvel did enough said? Mm -hmm. I do. Dude. Yeah. There's silent money. 
Yep, I think that everyone should look at that. Like, not only look at 21, look at Silent Interlude, you should look at that. I have that. What's kind of a bummer about Nuff Said is they only collected some of it. They only collected some of it in the trade. They didn't collect all of it. I almost would say we should do an omnibus of it. Because I think you can learn a lot about comic book storytelling from not only a silent interlude, but reading Nuff Said. The more clear it is, the the, the better the the artist is at conveying like the, the story. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a a manga not that it was my favorite but it's called uh gone and it's about a uh sort of a tyrannosaurus rex oh, type a little character orange, yeah, a little orange dinosaur yeah, yeah but that was a, that was always a completely silent manga so um mm -hmm. it's an an interesting one to to understand the storytelling yeah, yeah some interesting yeah. techniques to, i i would imagine tricky as a writer but tricky for an artist too well i went to school for art uh, before I was writing and I actually only knew artists for a really long time you know I didn't know any other writers until like I mean 2010 and I already published books by then and so I started meeting other writers and so I always think art first you know Good. I would try to approach it from that aspect it's a visual medium uh, I like hearing that yeah well I think that clarity is really important like I really believe you should not have to read a line of dialogue to understand what happened if I when I'm when I'm working on a book I want to strip as much dialogue as possible out of it. If, okay. if I explain anything, I want to. I, I think it is the, it's a bummer when you have to like put in a line of dialogue to explain something that, that wasn't there because of the art doesn't show it. Like I don't want to have to explain anything. I want I want the art to do as much. And it sucks because then I'm just like leaning on the artist. I'm like, you do all the hard work. <laughs> but you've like got art. you've got some. Just to be clear, you've got a pair of really really great artists on oh, these yeah. um gi joe books dude tom is killing it tom uh tom is doing amazing amazing stuff there's yeah there's a moment in the book i don't want to spoil it yeah there's there's some he he really went for it because he also loves the property and he also has yeah. his favorites and so he like he is so there's there is a scene where duke is fighting a bunch of and this might actually be maybe we show this in the ash cam but duke is fighting a bunch of guards and I think um, I, I I think you talked about it at the panel. I don't think he's really yeah. well. He's there, there's this from the, this was right. in the ash can that's and it's in the preview. Yeah, yeah look at that. That's and so, that's a lot of guys. Dude, so there's a part where where Duke is fighting a bunch of people, and I was I don't think I think I said five. And yeah, I was like maybe five, and he was like, no man, I'm gonna make him fight like twenty five, and he really went for it. And there's moments like that that's where a lot he, of work taking it and elevating it every single time and just going big in ways where I'm like, I'm like, Tom, I'm giving you cheats, man. I'm trying to find ways to help you out. So every day isn't difficult. And he's like, Nope, I'm going to add more. And it's the same way with, uh, with Andrea, like Andrea is like, I'm going for it every time with COVID. Good. I mean, just, it gets just, yeah, just going big every single time. And I think that part that's of it, you know, is having fun. You're all having really a lot of fun with it. We should um we should remind people when these are coming out. You wanna you wanna tell them when when to expect uh like what month to expect uh Duke yeah. and Cobra Commander? You know, so Duke's coming up quick, you know, it's coming out at the end of December and the Cobra Commander is coming out in January. I mean they're they're coming up really fast here. Yeah. And you know, uh the story we're telling, you know, obviously we started off with Transformers, which just started back in October and, and mm -hmm. obviously with Void Rivals back in the summer. But yeah, I mean, if you're interested in, in, in reading this, I hope you dive in with uh, with Duke here and, and start coming along with us on this crazy story we're telling across all these books, and you can see this big this big uh, universe that we're building. But yeah, Duke comes out in December, and then uh, Work Commander comes out in January, and that FOC is coming up fast, so you got to pre-order either pre-order or go into your comic book store the day it comes out, and then uh, and pick it up. Um, I predict good things because what I'm seeing yeah. is really strong. Uh, I I feel like uh, I feel like GI Joe. Uh, uh, you know, earlier I was saying, oh, it's not necessarily at the same level of Transformers. At the same time, I definitely see a lot of really positive signs for it reaching new people. I think the classified line has um, yeah. you know built to a lot to 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 a level I wasn't necessarily initially expecting. I mean, we're getting Raptor. How soon till we get the Raptor uh, one, one shot, uh, Josh? uh it's funny when march you know, the moment that the moment that that was revealed like two weeks ago right yeah. uh i was getting texts from people that <laughs> you get raptor in here and i'm like listen i'm not done until i get everybody like i am you know when we went um yeah dude it's funny like there was a moment, <laughs> i probably shouldn't talk about this but i will um there was a moment we were talking to hasbro and they showed us some stuff that hasn't been announced yet 
Okay. And I was like, oh, dude, I'm so pumped. And there was, uh, so you, uh, yeah, I can't get into this. But it was, <laughs> like, it, was, it was, it was funny to see that we were in like very similar spots. Like there was one, there was one character who I really like that we haven't revealed yet. That's in, in that's in Duke, and um, I really enjoyed uh, writing this character. Oh, Skidmark, of course. Yeah, no. the driver <laughs> of the desert fox. Well, we uh, we were. I was talking to Hasbro, and um, I made a comment about it. And they were like, oh, do, do you not know? And I was like, no. And they were like, look. And they showed me the toys of it. And I was just like, dude, I was like, yes. I felt like, I was like, dude, we're we're kind of in this, this similar space where we're just all very pumped about this stuff. It was, yeah. dude. It was, it was a moment of like, I was, I was very, very excited. And then I was showing them stuff. I'm like, look at this, look at this. Look what we're doing over here. And, and you know, I was showing them pages that, uh, that Tom had, had been drawn. Yeah, those classifies. Dude. What I, fun for all of you getting to to, <laughs> to talk about what's coming up that we have to wait months for. I know, I know, I know. It's that's been. I'm telling you the patience thing. The patience thing is real because like, I want to talk about. It, I want to show it. I know and you've I, been waiting a long time. You've you've known yeah. about this for a long time. I'm it, sure it's been tough. Way, I'm excited that. to see it. I I really am. Um, Thanks, um, because I already like GI Joe. And I'd been reading your work before I knew that you were the guy that was going to take over uh, for G.I. Joe in the Energon universe. So, so yeah. I'm excited personally. I hope that uh, I hope that a bunch of people try out G.I. Joe. If you haven't read it before, I think you'd be surprised at just how nuanced and deep a lot of the characters in G.I. Joe are. I think yeah. that there's, a, there's, there's quite a bit of story and it's not simply just taking two characters and mashing them up in, in a fight every week. It, it, there is, there is a little bit more to it. No, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we all want to make sure it's uh, accessible. Yeah. For people. You know, it's, that's, that's been the thing. Idea. That's the thing that we've been, I've been walking the line of because it's like, I love the property so much that it's like, I want to make sure that people like me go into it or like they get to see those things that they love. You know, you get that bit of, I don't even like calling it fan service, but you get to see that respect. Yeah. To, the, this, to what's yeah. come before. Yeah. You know, but also I have to be like, how do I make? This how do we, how do you get somebody new in? Yeah, somebody's never who never read it before. They might be introduced to it for the first time. So it's like walking that line between both of them uh, is has been a challenge, but it's also part of the fun of it. You know, so, totally get it. Yeah. Totally get it. Well, I mean, you said that like uh, you, you're looking at the characters first, and I think that that yeah. that sounds like a good idea. I, I hope uh, I hope everything goes very well uh, for both you as a writer and yeah. me as a reader <laughs> i'm looking forward to it though i'm looking yeah, forward I'm to it and i hope you i hope you enjoy it yeah i appreciate you giving me your time because i know you are writing a lot of books yeah. uh Good what luck. you've got like flash and batman and robin you've got dark ride you've got duke yeah got it's, cobra uh, commander it's so it's superman batman and robin green arrow duke cobra commander and then a bunch of stuff that hasn't been announced of course <laughs> I have, you know, a dark ride. I got, I got, a, I got a full plate, and that plate is overflowing. So that's a good position to be in. Yes, for keep sure. Keep up with it. Keep your passion. I appreciate you giving us some of your time today to talk about some insights into the work, and uh, I'm very excited for it. Thank you so much, Josh. I appreciate yeah, it. Having, yeah, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it coming on. I've been a big fan of your show for a while, so it's awesome to come in and, and talk about GI Joe with you. It's an honor for for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye. Hey, folks. Thanks so much for watching this episode. It sincerely means a lot to me. If you want to support the channel, I do have a Patreon. You can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. It makes a big difference to me. I try not to take too many sponsors. I try to just give folks uh, as many episodes as I can and do it at the best quality. But a sincere thank you to all these names you see scrolling because my patrons are really the people that enabled me to do this. Um, would appreciate your support if you're in a position to. Uh, I had a blast talking about this stuff. I, I like Transformers and G.I. Joe. I'm of an age where I grew up with it and there's a nostalgia feeling, but I sincerely care about these characters. Um, I, I'm hopeful that this will be a good series. I'm looking forward to it. So far, I'm sincerely enjoying the Transformers run by Daniel Warren Johnson. So I do recommend that. I just thought I'd throw that out there. And uh, thank you so much for watching. You guys are amazing. Take care. Bye.